morning, it's, uh, Thursday morning. Got a chance to shower this afternoon, but what we're pouring today is a, what they call a dumpster pad. So, pretty good sized pad, 48 by 14. It'll be all fenced in afterwards. Just gonna give it a broom finish. We'll cut a few joints in it, edge it, make it look really nice. But really, by the time they get done, no one's even gonna be able to see it afterwards. All right, we're gonna get it poured today. Been waiting over a week to get this done. It's gonna be a nice morning anyway, but again, chance of heavy showers this afternoon, so we're gonna wanna get it set up pretty quick. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Now we're working as a sub on this job, so we were hired just to come in, set the forms up, put in the insulation, pour and finish the concrete. We didn't design the slab, you know, it didn't, they, they told me what mix design to get, what reinforcement to put in, we're using fiber mesh. And uh, again, just getting paid as a sub, just for labor on this, not even providing the materials, that, that's it, getting all charged to the contractor we're working for. Now the contractor that we're working for they did all the foundations and the concrete work in this big subdivision like apartment complex type building. This is a huge complex here. And this is actually the first time we've been in here. There's been somebody else, like more of a commercial outfit doing the flat work. So I don't know if they just couldn't get him today or what, but they asked us to come in here and do this. We mainly do all their residential stuff. So we're here today pouring, we've got 4,000 PSI concrete, uh, fiber mesh in it, like I said, mid-range water reducer, there's air entrainment in this concrete, and we're getting it poured out, something that we like doing. There's two inches of styrofoam under it because that helps keep the frost from getting up under the slab and heaving it, as well as having really good gravel. This stuff's got really good gravel under it. You can kind of see the, kind of see the drainage there off to the side. We got two loads coming. We'll dump this first truck right out, get him out of the way so he can rinse and get back to the plant. <clears throat> then Darren and I and Luke will get this straight edged, full floated, all that good stuff. Right now Darren's going along, he's magging the edges. The slab itself is about six inches thick. Plenty thick enough and strong enough to support what they're gonna put on it, that's for sure. Those, those, you got the poles sticking up on the edges for the fencing. And then the other things are bollards. So when they, when they move the dumpster in and out, the dumpster, if it's going to hit something, it's going to hit the bollard before it goes through the fence. <laughs> so I think they've had to deal with that before. And now they're just taking precautions so it doesn't happen again in the future. Pretty good looking mix we got going. Not too not too rocky, not too bony. Pretty good mixture from this company. It's gonna be a pretty nice day out today. <clears throat> We're gonna be dealing a little bit with part of it being in the sun, part of it being in the shade, so it's gonna dry and cure differently. So we'll have to deal with that a little bit as we go, and especially when we get into the finishing. It's not that big a deal when you pour. But when you're doing broom finishing, stamping, you know, even power troweling, the shade makes a big, big difference. As you can see, we're using rear dumps here. This company that we use, who's, they actually have about seven or eight concrete plants locally. They have all rear dumps, they don't have any front dumps. So we deal with, you know, having to run the chute, tell the driver to move forward, back up, lift the chute up, drop it down. We're just used to it because we use rear dumps so often that for us it's not a big deal. I know for some of you guys you mentioned you can't believe we have to use rear dumps all the time. Well, that's just the way it is where we are. There are a few other companies that have front dumps where we're from. They're just harder to get concrete from or they're not anywhere's local to where we're pouring. So I'm not gonna have them drive an hour and a half to get to a job just for a front dump when I can get a rear dump that's 20 minutes away. I grew up, you know, when I started out, it was back in the, back in the 80s, the 1980s, and there were no front dumps back then. Every company had rear dumps. So I grew up just using these. For me, this is normal. It's easy. 
no issues at all this is the first truck dumped out we'll go along we'll get get our edges all magged we like magging our edges real good we'll tap those edges as we go to get any air pockets out when we strip the forms and then we're just gonna hand screed it today since we got to go around all these fence posts and bollards and stuff like that no real big reason it's kind of small enough too so no big big reason to pull out the vibrating screed on this one I'm kind of getting the, the second truck ready to go as Luke and Darren are getting this screeded down. Now when we set forms like this, whenever we can, we like setting the top of the form right flat to grade, right on grade. It makes, so you can see I can screed right off the form right here. And then it makes finishing a little bit easier too when you go and run the edger up the side or running the broom over the form. It's a little bit easier to do than if the form's higher. This also had a slope to it. It sloped. Darren's in the back there in the yellow shirt and I'm, I'm in the front so it sloped towards me. Probably about an inch and a half I think. We're going to end up cutting joints in this by hand we'll end up edging it we'll end up brooming it you know mag floating it out with a funny float running the broom over it you'll get to see all that coming up here in the video that's how easy that stuff bull floats right there when you use a mid-range water reducer in your mix down and back you get a nice smooth surface closes it up really good then when you go to run the funny float later on you know as long as you don't get on it too late with the funny float it'll it'll float it out really nice a couple different views I'm giving you one from the head cam and then one from the tripod Trying to give you a good idea of just what it looks like if you're right there with me versus off from a distance a little bit. Yeah, it closes up pretty good with the mags, not too sticky, not too rocky. Tight, just the type of finish, you know, concrete we like to finish. I'm probably pouring, we're probably pouring around a six for a slump. That's a pretty normal slump for us, six, six and a half with a mid-range water reducer. No sense of really pouring it any drier or stiffer than that, making it harder on yourself when you just use a little bit of water reducer in the mix and pour it nice and what we call kind of loose, easy to move around, easy to screed, easy to bowl float, easy to finish. Yeah, we didn't have too much left over there. We'll try not to make too much of a mess in those rocks. Keep it right on the edges. They got to come in. We'll strip the forms. They'll come back in and backfill this all up real nice. But we'll just try to make one little pile with it here off to the side. Ain't gonna be long on this corner. That, Mike? Won't be long on this corner. Now, once we get this initially bull floated, you know, get the edges kind of magged out. We'll have to let it set up for a little bit, get a little bit firmer. Then we can start the finishing process. We're not gonna jump right back and start finishing this. We don't want we don't want the broom marks to look, you know, too wet, too deep. We still want a nice fine looking broom finish on this just to make it look good and professional. See it closes up pretty good with the mag. Darren's just blending in the two trucks right there where the first one stopped, second one started. Making sure it all looks pretty good. You see he's having to go back and forth over the concrete maybe just a little bit more than we normally do because we poured it just a little drier than we normally do. Not a lot of weight with that bull float. 
if you wanted to, you could put a little weight on it. You could put a couple bricks on it. You could put a couple of the metal pins we use for forming, the, like, like I did right there, on it. And that adds a little weight to it. Just makes bull floating a little easier. A lot of other subs on this job. There was excavators on site. There was plumbers. There was electricians. All kinds of people that were using the same parking lot and driveway we're using. You can see as Darren's finishing up the bull floating, Luke and I are over there in the background. We're going to start cutting joints already. With that torpedo groover we have, that goes down about an inch and a half. So you don't want to start cutting too late or you'll never get it down deep enough. You can cut pretty early with that. Get your joints cut, just roughed in, and then you can, you know, if it, if it seems a little bit wet when you're cutting those joints in, you can just let it sit for a little bit afterwards and go back through them. The thing is, you know, you, that, that torpedo groover's got to move the rock and stuff out of the way in order to get the joint in. So if the concrete's too, too firm, it's not going to be very fun running that groover through it where it's so deep. You can see Luke in the back. He just kind of sets it down. He can go down and back. If you hit it at the right time, it's basically just down and back with that groover. And it gets that joint cut right in there nice and deep. Then that's all you really got to do to start with. Just, just get it to that point. Move on. Get your other joint cut in. Darren's almost done bull floating. I just got that last joint measured out for Luke. And then once we get the joints cut in, at least roughed in like this, then I'm guessing we probably got a few minutes to wait before we need to start magging it out. Good thing about that torpedo joint or groover is you know, you can kind of, as long as you got two marks, one on one end, one on the other, you can kind of eye it with the sight from one side to the other and get a really nice straight joint. You don't have to snap too many chalk lines unless you've got to go a long distance. You can see even, that's even floating on top just a little bit. If we would have waited another 15, 20 minutes, we probably wouldn't have been using this. Got to move it back and forth just a little bit just to sink it down in full depth. Once you get something full depth like that, inch and a half joint in a six inch slab, pretty, pretty darn sure it's going to crack in that joint later on down the road. So we'll, we'll leave that joint as is. We'll clean it up a little bit. I'll show you how we'll clean it up here a little bit later, but... That's as good as you got to get that right now. Just get the rocks moved out of the way, then you're good to go. All right, so it's not going to be long. We got to get that mag, get it ready to broom. It's setting up really good today in the sun. I think we'll be able to use all our tools. What I mean by that is uh, this. We'll be able to use the funny float to get almost everything on the inside just obviously mag around the outside with the hand mags and then just broom it won't enough to get on that thing we'll use our other joiner to touch up and smooth up the joints a little better and then we're not leaving a tool joint there we'll just leave the actual joint itself and then just run our edger around the outside I gotta get another handle. Yeah. yeah, so much easier being able to reach all this stuff from the outside and getting on it early versus having to get on it by hand. Doing everything from the surface.
So the reason we use both of these is the first one really cuts it down deep. So it kind of kind of separates the aggregate down in the concrete. And this one really smooths it out to more towards the surface, which is what you're going to see. Just makes it much more likely it's going to crack in this joint because the joint goes deeper than just the, the this one's only three quarters of an inch here. The other one's about an inch and inch and a half. Looks tricky to see between those poles. So we can just keep running this right through it as we get the surface mag just to keep cleaning it up. But for now we're just getting it pretty nice. Yeah, it's good enough for now for the joints. Now we can switch over to the funny float. And just see if it's, it might be a little too early for that, but better early than late with that. We'll just try it, see how it works. Yeah, it might be just a tiny bit early. I can just get some of these bolt bolt lines out. We've got a little bit of bleed water on the top still. Trouble is, if you don't get those, you don't get the buffalo lines out early, you won't be getting them over this. Get on there with skids, hack them up by hand. All right, so everything magged out pretty good with the funny float. We were able to go over everything we needed to go over. Sometimes we go over it twice, make it make it a little bit tighter. And then Darren's just running the broom. We got the two foot broom we're using today, just because it's a little bit lighter to pick up and set over the slab. And we're just going for like a medium broom finish. Doesn't have to be really fine right here, like maybe around a pool deck or a walkway or a patio or something like that. So just a medium broom finish. And just using the funny float as we need to to keep going. But it's drying. It's curing up pretty good. It's pretty even as far as the cure time. Other than that part way down by the building that's in the shade. Everything else is, is pretty much all ready to go at once here. So we cleaned up the joints really good using the yellow joiner. Those look nice and neat and clean. And we're going to leave that joint just as is. I'm not going to put the finished tool mark on the joint. No real need to here. It's all going to be covered up anyway. But we will do the edger. We'll, we'll clean up the edges with the DeWalt edger and just finish them off. We're leaving the tool joint. I'll show you that right in a second. Here I am just cutting it in. And here we are just putting the finished tool mark on it, kind of cleaning it up a little bit. The edges, like I said, the edges will be seen. I'll show you in the picture here at the end what it looks like. And then we got that one last piece right there. We got to, we had to wait just a couple minutes for that pot in the shade just to catch up to the rest of it. But eventually it did. And then we fall behind with the edgers, put the tool marks in. And then that's just a basic broom finish slab right there. That's going to be how it looks right there. You said, not that it doesn't go right over his head sometimes.
right, well, there we go. All done. So we'll leave the forms on. I'll come back and strip the forms tomorrow. And, you know, I'll put up the... Probably put up the yellow caution tape just to try to keep anybody from walking on this. That will happen. Somebody will walk right across it if we don't. But that's the way it goes. A lot of subs here working today. Gonna make sure everything's protected good. But that'll do it for this today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.